다른 선수들한테 피드백을 받는데 LCK 선수들한테 너무 레이노브 선수를 경계한다는 것 같이 느껴진다고 하더라고요. 저도 다시 생각해보면 레이노브 선수를 경계하면서 어떻게든 이겨먹으려고 오히려 제가 스스로 말리는데 천천히 하면 이길 것 같아요. 그래서 팀 위키드는 음, 팀 믿고 저는 천천히 Interesting insight. Take it slow, but don't find out a way to beat Rainover. Basically, the way to do it, and that's exactly what they did. Welcome back as you're joining us for Team Envy versus Team Liquid. So we head into Game Two, and we hear Lyra there, kind of a yeah. back and forth. It's interesting to hear that because usually you just think of as Nidalee and diving under every turret, maybe even level three. Exactly. You also have to think of Rainover in the past being such a widely respected jungler. He was for the best reasons. jungler in the N L <laughs> LCS for a year because he was crushing everyone, and yeah. the reputation, I think does influence the way you play against him. And I think it's a good observation to sure. realize that you shouldn't play differently against a player, even if he does have that great reputation. And another thing with Envy is they have to do a lot of this stuff on their own, right? We got to see that AMA from the Envy owner the other week yep. saying that Violet, their coach, is generally more about lifestyle. They trust the players to have a lot of their own yep. knowledge about the game and make those things. We've heard Apollo talk about how Lyra really is much like a coach for that team. So they have to do a lot of this stuff and you have to, in a sense, give the players a ton of credit here because it's a seven win team uh, and they're doing all that work. So I'm really impressed with Lyra specifically for that. And a few of the ones they just came up with beating Dignitas who had actually beat them previously, able to kind of overcome these uh, bigger wins that they needed towards the end of the season and come together with Changes. We haven't seen changes working for a lot of teams. Putting mm -hmm. Niski in the mid lane now, he's been actually performing quite well, and the rest of the team is starting to gel, which always helps. Yeah, we say all that, but they lost first game to Liquid, oh, they who did. only has two match Didn't wins they? this split, because Baron <laughs> exists, and they had a Callista with the Cho'Gath, and then Rainover walked up and yeah. smote it away, just like that, and then they lost easy, complete easy. control of the game. And you do have to couch that win a little bit for Team Liquid, right? Because they were losing for a lot of it and they should have lost Baron right there. But they still had a very good scaling team composition. And once they got the lead, they knew what to do with it. There's plenty of games where Baron gets stolen and it doesn't matter. That doesn't turn the game around. Absolutely. This is something where Envy has to recover because for 90% of that game, they were the better team. They just didn't take care of business at Baron. Honestly, repeat laning phase with, you know, Seraph not getting ganked as much. That was the only problem and he even absorbed that well. So it wasn't even that big of a detriment to Envy. We'll see if Liquid can again finagle their way out of an early game or kind of come back through with a robust pick and ban. Both teams did come through last time with pretty good squads. Yeah, new bans this game for oh, Envy. Getting very rid of new Nar, bans. Also getting rid of the Callista, which is something they played last game to a fairly high level of effectiveness, but Piglet has been a very good Callista player himself, and it doesn't seem like something they would yeah. want to first pick. Usually we're always seeing it picked in some capacity, right? Mm -hmm. Obviously it, it bot lane, but it, the bans have not been that much for the Callista. However, the Thresh still gets locked in, and that was on the ban list last time towards Envy. That was the third ban coming in from Team Liquid first phase. High priority there. Yeah, Hakuo, great playmaker with the Thresh. Not as good without the Callista but still a very strong setup man for ganks. Scaling. Just I mean, on once again. Gonna give him the tryst. Caitlyn's off the table. Pretty simple. Uh, and it's looking the same for a Team Liquid. They can't go Nar in the top lane, but they can still go Grox Jungle, Lulu Support, Trist AD, Oriana Mid, all those things if they want to. It's a very generic composition. Still have the Cho'Gath, why not? It worked out really well, actually. Yeah, it was a really strong early game from Lyra. It, it sets up even better with the Thresh, actually, because you can <laughs> you can move that Cho right next to someone in the mid lane if you just lantern him in. They wouldn't blind a mid laner like that. Maybe Would possibly. They? <laughs> Five seconds left, AD carry being hovered here as Niski goes ahead and locks in. Jin for Apollo. A little mm. more long range hit for this game. If some hooks hit, AD can stay safe. Very interesting. Earlier today, we got to see Jin against a bunch of tanks. 
and the Dusk Blade didn't really do anything there. If you're playing a bunch of squishies, the Dusk Blade Lethality Gin build is super effective. Yep. However, I feel like when you're putting Gin in your team comp this early, and the enemy team has yet to pick their Ooh. top laner, if if Team Liquid just go, I'm surprised they actually put Galster there instead of Maokai, and just put Maokai in the top lane, then they could have just tank armor stacked and essentially have invalidated the Jin in team fights. So I think that's a very risky Jin pick there by Envy, but we'll see if Team Liquid is able to punish it. Misty hits for the second phase. So expect to see the same thing for Golden Glue, possibly the Galio, the Orianna. Galio probably for sure. <laughs> Get another tank off the board for these guys. Niski, like you said, already gonna have a bit of trouble. Penetrating the hide. There's the Galio. Yeah, maybe just trying to make sure that they don't pull together too many tanks, but they have the first pick after afterwards and they still have a, both of their soul laners to decide. Galio at least can't go in the mid lane. Definitely using all their time. Huh. All right. Yeah, so... Yeah, the Lucian for Nisky. That's because Team Liquid would probably be okay picking the Orianna right away after the phase here, and you mm -hmm. don't want to Orianna against a Lucian mid lane. Based on the Orianna... Based on the Syndra and Lucian bands, I think they just give Golden Glue Orianna here and then wait for their Maokai pick if, or whatever top lane pick they want. Right. And let Lorlo pick. Yeah. Shall see them. Lorlo's actually... Every decently strength, decent strength in his laning phases, and they may actually leave it for Golden Glue. Now, there we go. Come switch on, it back and forth as they hover. Three seconds left. The Oriana does get locked in. Final two picks Ooh. here from Envy. What do we need? Get that top laner and Niski in the mid lane. We'll find out both here. Yeah, both soul laners up for grabs. What you gonna play against Oriana when they ban out the mid laners that are good against it? You choose. Niski's had a pretty few good Cassiopeia games if he wanted to do some late game damage. Talia wasn't bad last game. Just gonna play that matchup one more time. Next ride in the wall. Just skate along the map. See if he can be in conjunction with Bakuo here on some roams in the early game. Him and Lyra making their way to get some dives in. That's kind of what they were doing last game. Niski on the back side of those roams. Yeah, gonna be the Jarvan on the side of Envy as Seraph picks that one up for the top lane. Shown by Liquid. Yep. See what their mind games were. His most picked generic top laner of the split has been Jarvan or Renekton, and this will be the test now. What does Lorlo want to do against the Jarvan? Do they go for the mega tank line and lock in Maokai top lane, or do they just match it up with a with a Renekton and then just hope to play a generically good game. That's what they're going for, just standard picks across the board. We'll have to see if Envy can pick themselves up, brush off that dirt from last game, a little dusty from that trail. The Baron going in favor of Team <laughs> Liquid really swung things around, but it's, it's not really yet you have to change much. And that's yeah. what you, you remember, don't get it in your head that things went to awry, there was one bad thing that made the game change, and you can obviously make that not happen. Yeah, don't change everything you're doing. Easily identifiable. Team Liquid changing a little bit of what they're doing. No Lulu to help out Piglet in the late game. That's true. Uh, Envy just has a ton of CC in the team composition, so if they're willing to go around the map and make plays, uh, they shouldn't have a. There shouldn't be anyone on Team Liquid who becomes unkillable. Renekton doesn't become a super tank. Jungle Rogus become very tanky, but not the same level as like a Maokai or a Chokath will in the late game, so the Jin I think is okay. Team Liquid almost opted not to try and stack tanks against it. Yeah. Hashtag TO and hashtag NV win. Team Liquid pulling out a much needed victory in the series, but can they get the entirety of it here coming in? They do go on to face P1, Immortals, C9, FlyQuest, and Dignitas. So definitely not the easiest games after this to come. They need these wins here. We'll see if they can get it as we head on to the rift. That is a tough schedule coming up. Lyra back. Bumping the, the fat beats. Everyone getting the groove. I like it. Let's go. Liquid, of course, though, trying to Take a win in the series. They're just at two wins on 
the split so far. Increase that winning percentage. One game away, they got two shots at it. They got a pretty similar team composition to last game. Three of the same champions. Switched out the Nar for Renekton and the Lulu for a Alistair. Still got a top laner that goes big. Mm -hmm. 30 seconds until more control over it. Yep, more, yeah, it's true. He gets it. I missed the, the back and forth top laners used to do as they audit each other like five times, just for no reason. Oh. Heal up anyways before you even get back yeah. to lane. A few too many people ended up bringing friends. <laughs> it's the gentleman's agreement. <laughs> that, that has ended. Not to mention, not a lot of times top laners are even helping pull for the junglers now, so mm -hmm. you just don't have that type of freedom anymore. Pepperidge Farm Minions remembers. Have spawned. Ring start. Oh as man! Well, these guys have come prepared. You got the Cowbell Alistar on one side, and the Beatbox Cho on the other. If anyone's gonna meet, those two should meet early on in the game. We just need more Cowbell. Have a DJ face off. All right, a good remix. Starting off on blues, and the 80s will head bot. Dorn Shield versus Dora's Ring hmm. in the bot lane. Yeah, the Doran's Ring Jin made its debut uh, about a week ago mm -hmm. over in the LCK. The logic behind it is Jin does have some monitor traits in lane. The, there is an AP ratio on Dancing Grenade, the Jin Q. So you do just as much damage with the Dorn's Ring as you would a Dorn's Blade early on in the lane. Uh, and then also, as they go into the level one trade, Jin is much more mage-like than all the other marksmen. So That's a good point. You don't really need this, you don't need to have the same mindset when you're building. You're just trying to think, what items can optimize my spell damage as much as possible? If you think of him like a spell weaver rather than an auto attacker, the Doran's Ring ends up making a lot more sense because he will be able to Q more. That will allow him to push the wave better. And it, in a lot of ways, does give you a stronger laning phase. So a lot of Jins have actually switched over to the Doran's Ring after thinking about it a little bit, yeah. realizing the AP ratio is there, and just understanding what type of champion he really is. I like to get that damage, too, off of killed bouncing grenades, so you can look to get a bit of steroid. Helps nicely. Apollo's taking it one step further, though. Uh, he gets 30 <laughs> AP at level one, so he has AP blues in his kit as well. So really trying to cheese with that dancing grenade early on. There you go. I like it. Especially kind of works against Matt. You're not taking, uh, obviously not Nami hits, but you're not getting APs, so you don't need to run that flat map <laughs> resistance early. You can throw in a bit more damage. I like it. Love aggression. Sometimes what you need to do to get ahead. Lorlo knows he's got some friends down just below him, but Rainover is able to handle that one as a bit of the roam in the jungle. They have an idea of Rainover's red. Ooh. See if they come back for it. That dancing grenade damage. Mm -hmm. About 110 damage there on the mat for one bounce. Nice Q dissonance, but more mana on the they side of have smite. Blue. This is no Baron, but it's still Ooh. a smite bite. Who's gonna get? Oh, Lyra gets it. That's it. Calibrated the smite. Should be working next time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, that bounce almost gets over to him. A hook for a headbutt. Looking to stack up his bells, but not enough. Oh. I love the long ones that just hover in the air. Yeah, I've seen some Jin bouncing grenades that go really far as someone chases a lantern or something. Yep. It'll get you. Nice little invade by Lyra on the other side there. Feel weird to go in and see your auto attack almost do nothing. Yeah. <laughs> Unless it's your fourth shot. You can basically see the the Jin working a little bit though. He's pretty much full mana, even though he's been yeah. hitting that spell on cooldown. Oh right there for the deadly flourish. What an aim, what a prediction there of where the end of the death sentence Got would him. work. First blood! Envy synergizing beautifully there to orchestrate a kill. Maybe another hook if that cooldown's there, but they leave it be and farm the lane. Gold Blue under the turret. Uh oh. Oh, shoved back. This is not what he wanted. Flash is there. Should live. Should live. Lips. Winions, not enough. Not close. Uh, only 40 health on both mid laters after that one. Good thing he's got Rainover below him. Boots. Yeah, Rainover helped out from the Raptor Pit. Made it so Lyra did not want to chase through. Ooh, Golden Glue. 
confident he can clear this wave without much issue. I know where every wizard on the map, and it makes me scared for him to be there. Let's see this yeah. again. Nice hook right onto him. They chain him with a deadly flourish, play him back in. Matt tries to peel with a stun ignite, but since Hakuo kept going, Alistair couldn't stop both of them. They follow through for a little bit of damage, and the ignite kicks him out. Just, you know, the Doran's ring, the ability power blues from Apollo. Getting the early laning phase of the Jin empowered enough to get that 2v2 kill. Kerblam. And now Rome. What is, what is the support doing top? That's what Lorlo's saying right now. He's got a flash out of this situation, but Envy working very quick off some aggression in the bot lane. They roam, but TL's trying to adapt as well here. Yeah, I mean, Seraph got camped without very much help last game. This game, Lyra goes up early, tries to pressure Lola for an early game, ends up invading for red buff. There's putting a lot more time and trying to help him out this game. I'm ready for it. Yeah, Golden Glue Last could hook. be cheating towards the bottom side, but you never know. The <laughs> oh! Wait he's a got, minute. He's got a flat. He's going down. It's all right. So Return on investment. Yeah, Golden Glue had no summoners, so really all they needed to do was have Seraph jump over the wall, but Hakuho decided to join in on the fun as well. Technically, he helped. This is These are the plays I'd love to see, except that there is actually quite a bit of cost using all those flashes. If, if Team Liquid can react faster with waves in a better position, that means they get turrets, they get those flashes. It can always turn very quick, as we have seen. Yeah. But they're going to go back to lane here, have a bit of a lead, and we'll see how they push this one. Yeah, sign of things to come, I think, as well for the game. Envy trying to be more aggressive this game than they were even last game. Right. They realized they gave too much time for Team Liquid, gave them a window back into the game, didn't yeah. uh, snowball fast enough, essentially. And in this game, they brought even more CC in there on just as much of a timer because they have the Jin this game, who doesn't have tremendous late game against tanky men. And they get a little aggro here. They see Rain over clearing a vision ward down towards blue. Looks like there's too many minions for Piglet and Matt to hide behind for the time being. Cleared up. CS among each of the lanes actually quite even. Rainover's just made sure to kind of stay in that jungle with continuing his Raptors. It looks like he has a pretty good lead, but they're just about even on that jungle path. Just a level ahead for Rainover. Niski skiing back down. Let's see where they yeah. can find their next actual advantage here because it looks like Team Liquid has the upper hand on that vision. Yeah, but w also with, with Golden Glue being down flash in the mid lane, uh, it does technically give Niski the ability to play a little bit more aggressive and then he would use that into roaming. Rain over clearing the control word in the side though does help out Golden Glue a fair bit and both coming off cooldown helps a bit more. A different game for Lyra as well. Had some stacks by this point. Much more aggressive with the rest of the team. Looks like he's actually going to do just that now towards the top side. Flag and drag. You can see yeah, no flash on Lorlo. Doesn't have slice and dice either. Dominus down. I was wondering if Lorlo was going to use it. Waits for the last moment. Looks to get the call. Heal oh, back damage. down just above top. And he can get another call. And he gets actually a lot of heal out of this one on Lyra. Slice and dice in two seconds. Watch out for the chomp. Gets a hit from the Vorpal Spikes and goes down. Teleports are down for those top laners, so Lyra's gonna get a quick clear down. What happens across the map because of this, though? That's still totally worth it for Lorlo, getting a kill in a 2v1. Most of the skill shots missed there from Envy. So if any one of those Raptors would have landed from Lyra, Lorlo would not have been able to finish off Seraph. BS or bot for Piglet. Call 57 from being stacked up for him. Seraph picks up a few more damaging items for himself as Lorlo kind of left him. Picking up pieces, if you will. Still recipeing towards a final item. Golden Glue backs. Actually goes for his Zork Boots first. Keep that movement up and keep himself off the Unraveled Earth. Let's see this again. Yeah, watch this one more time. So the EQ doesn't connect, but Lolo does use a Slice and Dice, and they think they're just going to be able to get it here. But notice how in the Cataclysm, Lyra can't get in to hit him. So Lolo's just buying time there. Spends his Rage on the W onto Seraph, which is a whole bunch of damage. And then Lyra is able to chase him down because it is a 2v1, but still a nice outplay there by Lorlo. No flash, getting ganked, still getting a kill. Roam down from Lorlo. He gets seen by a ward, but it looks like he's going to try to at least hit Scrying Orb and Blasting Cone here. Gets one ward down. Yeah, he's Blasting Cone back over. That's done. I love the Kyle Bell. Matt. 
tearing off the roof. I think it's actually just pull out of this one. A lot more activity as well from Team Liquid in this one, though. Piglet was in lane just about the entire time, especially with a Cole as well. He is roaming around. Yeah. They're trying to secure some more kills than they had last game to keep themselves at pace. Yeah, trying to get involved any way he can because they're losing the laning phase pretty badly. So trying to get control wards in there, knowing Lyra has the feast secure, you would think, on the Drake if they go for it. Hold you to that. Yeah. Just don't don't count on it for Baron. Don't count on for the Drake. Uh, Apollo really just bullying this lane. Very close to being able to get his dust played. Oh. Oh, position. Oh, Mecco's zoning. In. Yep, they take it. They didn't have the vision going on the other side. Two teleports coming in as well. And these will finish. Rainover's just a little bit closer, however. How's this one gonna play out? Polo goes in, Rainover in Apollo. Instantly shredded down. Hakuo is able to get just past that Cataclysm to keep himself safe as well. And Seraph helps get the team out. Piglet not picking up any kills there. And just that kill onto Apollo. Ooh, Lorlo getting in just when he needs to. And credit to Matt for escaping with his life right there because it looked rather suicidal running in there as Alistair as Lyra had arrived in the lane. Nothing will reduce the true damage from the Feast. So even if he has his ultimate, he would still be a victor. But he knows the hook misses, so he says, hey, it's a good time to go. Kurgan Colossus procs. Matt does get hit by the rupture, but doesn't get hit by any edges of the box. So the feast is used on him, but then when Lorlo comes in, he has a larger impact than Seraph because he is winning that lane, and that's really yeah. what turned the tide to team. Golden Blue, Niski actually not able to make it to that last fight, continue to go back and forth in the mid lane without being able to solo kill each other. Kind of hard, I guess, in that aspect. You really have to go all in. One's gonna do about half your health, and you gotta do it again. So these guys playing safe. They actually have both summoners up as well. If they do get a little pressure, we see that coming from Akuo ever so slowly as they start to regain vision control on the red side of the map. Yeah, still a pretty close game as well, 1,000. Oh boy. And as you mentioned, the call on Piglet, if he gets that going, he's still gonna be able to scale into the late game just fine. No repeat of uh, the over-the-wall train we saw from Seraph and Hakuo earlier. It's like teams only have one of those in a game. Like, and go button! It's like, that works. But we can't do it again because our flashes are down. And things get a little too scary as everybody gets more items. So the temper starts, but here's the hook. They may be able to lock this one down. With that will going down, Matt obviously taking zero damage. And this could be a turnaround coming in on Niski. He's going to have to be very careful. Ghosting and surfing against the wall. Tries that to get himself in a good spot. It's a safe spot. They, it's basically that a bait. Is. He's able to get himself now over the wall as he weaves one to safety. Piglet in a bad spot. Jumps to the other side. There is so much jumping back and forth between both teams here. I don't think either one knows what they fully want to commit on. Yeah, and it's going to keep going. Piglet sticks around for control. And here comes Hakuo Nero. The rocket jump is down. He's going to get hit up. He has to proc down. He might have it back just in time. Apollo gets the kill down for himself with the two assists going to Lyra and Hakuo. And look at this. Seraph the whole time smacking away at that turret. In a losing lane, he gets first turret of the game on Jarvis. So the indecision. Yeah. And then the control ward greed by Piglet. Cost Team Liquid big time. They were just coming back in this game, but then lose an extended 5v4, give up first break and first turret all in one go. Let's see what the buys are. See this fight one more time again. Quite a bit of money in the pockets of everybody on the rift. This yeah. fight went down. I mean, Pickles coming up from the bottom. TL says they want to cut people off. Niski. Flashes right there, the rupture delays everyone else, and then no one is able to knock him off his wall until he is to safety. Lyra then actually ends up flashing right into Piglet, turns him onto the run, and Piglet uses his rocket jump and his flash. So he doesn't have those things. And then goes to kill the control ward with no vision of the opponent. Hakuro says, okay, we will kill you now. Uh, Four shot from Apollo comes through. Ooh, he just, just got jumped back. Good close down by Envy there. All for the vision ward. Sometimes it's worth. When it's yours. When it's yours. That 1,000 gold lead is what TL's working with right now. 
Lorlo still able to push Seraph around on the top side, so it's gonna feel pretty good when cross map fights happen. Here's one, an oh. airborne Niski from a shockwave gets thrown around and put into the void. Golden Blue coming up with a kill and help from Rainover. His team Liquid seems to be sorted around the map a little bit better for these skirmishes. Yeah, nice combo there by Rainover and Golden Glue. Lyra and Niski really not packing that much damage this early on into the game. The burst from Oriana comes in pretty easily to finish off Niski. Now with the Rift Herald, Team Liquid would have a chance to pull this gold back around. The question is, will we use it here? Because I, I see a lot of times teams using Rift Herald on turrets that they're going to kill anyway, rather than using it to secure a turret. So now that Seraph has come to defend the turret, I wouldn't mind Rain over just dropping it in the lane and letting it take the turret because it's going to charge up and that would kill it. Instead, he decides to use the Empowered Recall, though. We'll see where he ends up dropping it. Hmm. One big fight bought, a map opener up mid. Who knows? What so is, many choices. What is to choose your own adventure this time? Yeah. The problem with Rift Herald from behind is oftentimes you can never even get it to the turret. So the opportunities are so few and far between to actually get a good spot, which is why I think Rainover should have used it right there in the top lane as soon as Seraph arrived in lane. Walk into a brush in the middle of the wave, drop it, and then recall because yeah. Seraph ain't stopping it. Uh, as one man up in that top lane, they would have had it in range of the turret, and if the turret was low enough, the first charge would have killed it. It's Come like back it, to that, see if they get better use. Yeah, it's like it's going to be the mid-pressure that's going to have to be used on, I should say. They're getting pushed in. Golden Blue will be very careful. <laughs> oh, Lord says hello. Good find. Actually trying to rinse and repeat. I said, they're not going to come over the wall again. Seraph was going to. <laughs> going for the yeah. fight, but where's the Rift Herald? It's probably got a good amount of time left on it, so they're not going to throw it out just yet, but it is going to be a bit of pressure towards that bottom side, shuffling towards mid. Yeah, you get four minutes to get a good use of it, and mid turret is often where everyone wants to use it because that's the most important turret to open up from a, just playing the map perspective. That's where Rainover wants to do it, but if Envy has all the pressure there, it's really hard to get down. Oh, maybe now? Here we go. Now we see. All right, can Shelly. What can you do? Bot lane is just the bot laners fighting it out. And like you said, it's going to be stopped pretty short here with a wave of yep. minions taking down to half HP and almost lower. Yep. Yeah, he's actually still going to have to fight. Not even any damage on the turret. If that would have worked as well, leaving the side lanes up for Piglet, still a good thing for Triss to farm. But Envy's kind of one step ahead here. Yeah. That was a really bad Rift Herald. <laughs> really, really bad. <laughs> they had no way of clearing the wave. If you're going to put it there, it's not going to charge until the minions are gone. Oh, well. Lost opportunity for Team Liquid, turning the Rift Herald into 25 gold for the opponent. Nice, guys. So where do they go from here? Liquid now kind of stops short. Seraph with the Tiamat on the top side. Doesn't allow Lorlo to even push those waves in. It stops at the 75% mark. Liquid trying to push in a Talia in mid. Not really what's going to happen. Oh, hello. Piglet, however, taking things into his own hand. Hands here in a fight. Dodging out the Deadly Flourish. Boost. Buster shot. Almost gets the kill. Matt's going to be able to get in front of this one. Cataclysm right down on the fight. But it's not going to be enough. Niski's just short as well. Let's try and get the finalizing damage on the Rocket. And Flash coming out from Piglet. Matt waltzes out of this one like a mad cow and Envy's gonna have to stay for something. Everyone's appeared in the bottom lane, though. They're gonna be able to get a lot of pressure on this turret and take it. Piglet loved the attempt, in a sense, thinking yep. he'd be able to get Apollo, but uh, the collapse by Envy was much cleaner, and at the end of the day, he gets no kills. They lose all their summoners, and they trade turrets. I said this turret would stand for a while. It falls. Orlo gets yeah, it anyway. Said. Yeah, Seraph with the play down bot side. Somewhat paying off as the team grab a turret, but no kill coming up. So quite a bit of resources used here. If they can get down TL's mid, be very, very helpful quick and start to finish off some of these items. Not much gold, except for Lorlo, 1600. Yeah, Lorlo again, the person with two kills from the landing phase. What can he do with it? As far as creating split push pressure, Piglet behind landing phase, but he did proc his call. So only 500 gold down on Apollo.
colorful drakes fall into Envy. Right over wants to take it, the hope. Gets in close, but back right over to Seraph. Whoa, oh. Seraph right through to Matt with the rest of the team. Beautifully done. They take him down. Now the hook onto Lorlo. His Dominus is running, but these guys are getting shredded. The damage coming through now from Apollo to drop one. Oh, the man. curtains are closing for Team Liquid. A shockwave now on terrain over, and one by one, they begin to fall or continue, I should say. Limping away as Golden Glue with no summoners up, and Envy now get to look at where they want to go. Matt still had no ultimate from the last time, so he evaporates at the start of that fight. And now Envy, still with four people alive, can take down yet another turret if they keep this push up. They're actually going to clear waves. We'll see if they can get both. Lyra looks like a Rift Herald. <laughs> huge. Getting some of those stacks as well, just where he needs one. That one chopped down onto Matt. So he feels pretty good about that. Yeah, he has consumed one Drake and one champion. Doesn't feast here. Actually spikes early, but then saves his feast for the fight <laughs> because it was imminent. Watch Matt. No ultimate. Good night. Clear feasts him up. That gives him seven Shogat stacks already. A really nice rupture on Golden Blue and Rainover oh. as well, uh, which sets up the continuation of the fight where they picked up another kill. All right. Envy coming out of base with a plethora of Vision Wards. Mm -hmm. Dark Seals. Stacking up as well for Niski just a little bit so he can find some extra power. And vision wards more so for Matt than the rest of the team here as TL is still kind of roaming around, clearing wards, and making sure there's a place. So objective now for Envy, push this vision up, get it used. We can see already towards the bottom right side of the map, there's quite a bit. Even with Baron up, they're hovering their vision towards that right side. Yeah, and this is also the Jin that everyone was scared about with the lethality patch because he has the Dust Blade which just does a whole bunch of burst damage when he's yeah. been out of sight. Uh, an extra 252 bonus physical damage and the 99% slow, which can then line up the Deadly Flourish at any point. Right. And this hasn't necessarily taken over the meta because Cinderhulk tanks are good and there's a few armor stacking tanks you can play in the top lane, but even though Apollo locked in that gen early, there's not armor stacking on the side of Team Liquid, so yeah. it is that threatening gin that people want to be able to play him for. So, think twice now about seeing or going in again, seeing that damage. I thought Lorlo was easily going to get over that wall, make it out of the fight. What, 500 plus damage crits coming out already. Hakuo with redemption coming in for one of his first items to keep that heal going. A jump down onto Lorlo. Just went down in the fight, came back up, if you remember, and they find him down towards the bot side. Envy is now pulling the trigger every time they see a chance, and they start to head towards mid, causing Team Liquid to have to route topside. Yeah, I mean, Golden Goose trying to push out that top wave, which gives mid lane priority over to Envy if they want it. Instead, they're going to opt for some Baron Vision. Second time's a charm for Cho'Gath's Feast on major objectives, you would think. Is that the, is that the quote? <laughs> yeah. That's that's the idiom. <laughs> Second time's a charm. My, okay. my Rune Terra idioms are aren't up to par. And he's maxed out his minion or monster feasts. One Drake, one champion, so that puts it at eight. Poor big ol' Lyra. Titanic Hydra finished up now for Seraph. Ooh. Negatron cloak as well, so he can weather the storm on some of this ability power not have to worry about Golden Glue's ultimates. Yeah, it's funny how Lyra, they're both building towards Gargoyle Stoneplate. Right. But Lyra said, I think armor is the best. And Sarah says, I think magic resist is the best. Is they switcheroo what they're building first. Seraph did have Ninja Tabi, whereas Lyra had cooldown boots, so that could be the reason mm. for it. Their own paths. Swifties coming in for Apollo along with his BF sword. Now pickaxe. He was able to just throw that in. So actually, big spike of damage. It was just that pickaxe before. So we'll see what else he can throw down on the table. Clearing mid, he'll join the team towards top side. Hopefully, Envy doesn't get in the fight too soon with two of their members spread out across the map. Well, if they can get any pick, uh, they're very willing to pull the trigger. Jin mm -hmm. can always join yeah. with Curtain Call, even though a lot of this Jin is not about Curtain Call. It's about getting the Dust Plate hit into the Deadly Flourish and then that's allowing you to get all four of your shots off, and then maybe you'd open up your ultimate if they continue to retreat. I remember seeing that early in the day, when Jin was kind of just tickling people with the ultimate. Mm -hmm. And like, all right, all right. Oh, 
Hey. There's a factor of this you have to play around. Right now, Team Liquid trying to play around all this catch potential. The rupture silences hooks from Envy. They really can't be standing in one spot for too long, but they all don't want to group up either. So it's a very big dance for Liquid around these turrets as the siege potential for Envy is big. They split off. The 1-3-1 one, one begins here for Envy as they try to spread Liquid thin. Yeah, and this would be on Liquid to say, hey, they're one through one which we should fight. Pull, pull that trigger even quicker. But hard to engage onto a Thresh. And now the minions are stacked for Envy. They can reconverge on the mid lane as now Liquid has to send defenders to the sides. Wonder at what point. Oh, maybe this point they're able to get Baron. That's a lockup, but he doesn't come any closer from over the wall. Gets hit up on the terrain, that stops the fight, and now Team Liquid has another chance. Seraph thinking about that Cataclysm, but it was two tanks, so he backs right away. Yeah, and this is a tricky point in the game for Envy because they had a similarly sized lead in game one, not quite this large, I believe, but they threw that game away. And even though it hasn't been as much of a problem this split, that was the story for Envy last split, is that they would get four or 5,000 gold leads and they wouldn't know how to close games. Right. We talk about Liquid struggles this split and how Envy is tied for fourth place. When this game happened last split, it was ninth versus 10. So there is a history between these teams uh, trying to fight at the bottom of the standings. In this split, it has been Envy who have done it successfully, but losing that first game to Team Liquid by not closing properly brings back some of those memories and they need to continue to play clean, not overstep their lead and close it out the right guys way. Guys were one of the best early game teams, right? They were able mm -hmm. to have so much gold in these early games and it almost feels like they're okay with that, right? And usually you are, but being too okay with it gives the other team an advantage. It allows the Tristana to farm up. And can't say it allows the Baron to be taken. That just kind of <laughs> happens. That's something, that's a, a drop in the bucket sometimes. Yeah, I mean, how can you how can you honestly secure Baron with <laughs> Cho'Gath, Callista, Smite? We could go on. This time, though, they have Lyra and no Rens to mess up his timing. He gets to prep it for himself with Smite uh, Feast. His Feast base on Baron will do 1,305 damage at this point in the game. Nice. The Smite will be 760, so if he does the math himself, he just says, okay. Oh. 1,950, and I can press both buttons at the same time and get it. That's the idea. Yeah. I was going to say 2,000, but that's how you mess yourself over, because you do 1,900 damage and pull out the Comer 2K. Oh, interesting. Piglet actually lands on the drop zone for Seraph. The fight is going to continue. Lyra gets hit out, Matt, very low, and that could be a chomp down for Lyra. If he gets in range, that's the flash chomp coming out as well. The cow is dead. Rain over waits to get back home as well. They're just trying to find their way back as Envy is going to drop a turret. Moving slowly, but now we need to start moving a little bit quicker. Now, it wasn't even the stone plate chomp needed. Up to 10 stacks. That is a big Cho'Gath. Baron. We can go for Baron. They do have they Rain want. over up still. They'd have to get Rain over out of there. Burns Rupture. I mean, they can get a few people in with Thresh if they want to. They're just burning out the blue trinkets from Team Liquid. So Team Liquid has three blue trinkets. They're now out of them. Barrel not revealing, because they're gone. It's like, how are they fitting in there? Yeah. No, I'm like, just kidding. Why did the barrel not see them? <laughs> so tiny. Right back over. Scryer's Bloom, super helpful in that situation. And now they're gonna be able to just kind of cordon off these lanes back in, possibly get one of these hooks in favor of Hakuo. We got flashes pretty much up for both sides. Piglets is down, but he's got the rocket jump. So everybody's gonna be able to basically go to the max on this fight. Rain over with the check, but he didn't realize that bush was still occupied by two members of Envy. Very slowly coming out of base. Envy is actually playing a really good bluff game right here. Yeah, that was actually really interesting. They said they're gonna stick around with two people while everyone else bases. <laughs> Because if Team Liquid had sent a full five-man squad, they would, <laughs> Lyra and Hakua would have died. But with that, they burn Rainover's Flash, which now makes this check even more difficult. See that improvement this team has had with the lead at 30 minutes? Have been able to close out games, albeit slowly a lot of the time. They're still doing it. You do not get extra points for winning in 30 rather than 40. It's true. Rush. 
only rush is, I guess, at that point, you, you kind of start to beat yourself at the game if you're not ending it. And then the opponent wins. This is not what you want. Envy looks to prevent that, and really looking good to get to a game three on this one. As we just get over that 30 minute mark, Lyra again quite big on this Cho'Gath, as well as the rest of the team getting their fill of kills to complete their items. Now they get to move forward. It looks almost unkillable now, as Piglet has to face these tanks this time around. Yeah, and does not have the Lulu Arted sensor. Right. Help him out more so. Very dangerous road. Matt's been a pretty big initiation factor for these guys. Down to half HP before he's been throwing the ultimate down, and that gives Envy the surefire go. They say, yeah, we can burn him down still. Get away with another kill. They have the true damage from Lyra. That ult doesn't matter. Yeah, didn't even need it there, there either, so Matt was completely caught with yeah. this team. Now they saved yeah. it for the Baron. Remember, just under 2,000 health. That's what Lyra can burst from. <laughs> wall him off, rain over. Still big guy, slide right over the wall, but they may try to get around. Rylai slowing the team as they get through. 52, they turn off the fight. immediately onto Lorlo. He's blasted down, a pair of shoes for somebody. And now Piglet looking to get himself out of this situation. Flash is just coming back up. Actually a while, I should say, from coming back up. And so is Whoa. E. The last few hits going down, coming in from Niski as they turn from this Baron. No chance for Liquid to steal. Yeah, don't need to play that game if you can just win the fight. Team Liquid forced to fighting because the Baron secure is so reliable, so they end up going in a 5v4, Lyra. Ooh. You can, you can stay there all day, man. I would, I, I'm willing to say he could take about 50 of those shots. I don't know, we have to count it against the Hans or Nautilus yeah. from, the, from the early part of the season. It was like 24 or 20, 25 shots. Looking at Matt as he's saying, walk this way. You don't want to go inside the base, but Envy aren't having any of it. They want that game three, and they're going to start the finishing touches here. 32 and a half minutes in. Rainover trying to stop the minions from getting in so they can armor up the turrets just a little bit more. Yeah, well, they, they have, actually, because mm -hmm. they have people respawning. So Envy's going to have to pull off that Baron play once again. One more of those, and the game is pretty much over. They're sitting on about 7,000 gold between everyone right Jeez. now, so you'd expect them to go back for a recall. But if they keep getting kills, why not get the kills? You would expect them to go back. Oh, no, they look for rain over on this fight. Piglet over the wall. He's got Seraph in his eyes if he can connect enough shots, but he can't get a range to get the explosive shot down, and he starts to get taken down himself. Envy deliver the medicine once again to the entirety of TL and Matt. Not long for this world. Great shockwave, though, as Golden Glue staves off a bit more of that pressure and does keep Matt alive. Nexus turrets in the eyes of Envy. Monstrosity of a Cho'Gath right now. Not even level Jeez. 60. He gets bigger if he levels up, by the way. It's because he has 12 stacks right now. I was going to say, at some point, I can't even tell if we're zoomed in or not. He's so big as Lyra makes his way to the front of the line with the rest of the team. That's the finish line this time around. In game two, they fell just short in game one. And as they pat the KDAs, looking for a bit more, some sirloins to head out with, one for the road. They're gonna go ahead and take down the Nexus. We're going to game three. Envy takes it over Liquid. Some nice smiles coming out of Apollo. The Doran's Ring Jin gives him an early lead in the lane, but that game was much nicer than game one for Envy. And I liked what Mark Z said on the desk after game one, how neither team would be happy with the result there. The team yeah. lost or yeah. Team Liquid for winning because when Liquid won game one, they did not do anything reliable. And coming into game two, it didn't seem like they made tweaks to try and make it more reliable. Right. Because aside from the Baron steal, Team Liquid lost game one. They didn't make many changes. Envy made a few tweaks, creating more CC with Jin and more pick potential. And then they just won again. So this was very close to being a 2-0. And I think unless Liquid switches up something in a big way for game three, you can expect it to be an Envy win because they were dominant in this game right. and for most of the first. Right. And we, uh, I said in the beginning, I was like, I love to see scaling in these compositions because there's so many tanks. But you can mm -hmm. fall into that position of we are looking to scale, so we're not doing anything just yet. And it seems yeah. to be what Liquid is kind of falling into, having the pressure towards the top side to keep knocking down Seraph. They don't really want to bring it down to say, hey, Piglet's not going to have much damage. We'll keep it mid. We'll keep it top. We'll keep it mid and top. And yeah. Piglet's been falling behind a little bit, but to still some extent helping to carry. Yeah, exactly. Envy's been winning that bottom lane by double-digit CS both games right. and pressuring the turret down very early. So it's hard for Team Liquid to play around that lane. 
Lyra has had two very strong Cho'Gath games. Wouldn't be too surprised to see that on the ban list yeah. for the next one because it's been pretty dominant. It has. We have seen the Callista taken out as well. It's kind of a mixed match. Which ones do or don't they want? We'll have to figure it out. To hear more about how Envy brought us to Game 3, let's send it over to Dash and Mark. Thank you very much, gentlemen. This is more like it out of Envy, right? Establishing a lead, this time sticking with it and playing it out correctly. We didn't have the Baron Blunder this time around. Playing a little bit more smartly around those global objectives. And this time, it, they do bring the Talia back, but it's not quite as snowball-focused of, mm -hmm. of a team comp overall. Uh, you do not have the Kalista, you don't have the Jace, you have Jarvan and Jin respectively. Both uh, can play a little bit more in a controlled style, so it makes sense. Uh, and then, once again, the Cho'Gath for Lyra got off the ground a little bit better this time. Got pretty massive by the end of the game, taking three shots from the fountain, didn't actually go down at all. So yeah. I mean, absolutely absurd where that champion can scale to. The other important thing to note is the Thresh. It was banned in Game 1 by Team Liquid. It was first picked here for Hakuho. So again, showing immense priority to that champion specifically, and the playmaking potential of Hakuho as a player. Absolutely. And on Team Liquid's side, they're mostly going back to the same idea. You run the Orianna uh, to... Uh, Tristana, again, you're going for some kind of hyperscaling team. You hope that you get into the mid to late game relatively even, and then you'll start outperforming them. I, I don't mind the idea. You and I were talking off camera a little bit about it. Just like, do you want to go more all in on the early game if you're Team Liquid? But we've seen them get monster leads before and fail to close out. So right. I think they're most likely to win if they can win a team fight and then transition that to objectives versus get a lead and then use objectives. Exactly. Don't dislike this draft. The problem is that when you're 10k down, you know, uh, there's no way to win it. And so again, they're just trying to push the game to a scaling point. It doesn't get there. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of Envy's early kills. Again, it's all about Hakuho and Lyra. Playmakers for this team. The 2v2 down here. Woo! Yeah, nice hook into the play. Has the lantern as well. So even though Matt did his best to disengage onto Apollo, he's still able to get the follow-up. Piglet not flashing right away. Maybe could have lived if he could have flashed and avoided some of the gin damage, but the flash likely would have followed. Then you go take that transition, bring it to mid lane. Uh, Seraph also getting involved with that one. And Finally, yeah, that's hot. Hogwo flashed. Miss the hook and throws the lantern. That's the I'm helping moment. I'm yeah. helping! Give me that assist. I threw well, a lantern. Funny. That takes more gold away from from one of the two carries, actually. Yeah. You're splitting the assist goal. It's hey, it looks better on the scoreboard. He's on the map. He's in the right place. He's helping make the play. Exactly. All right, even if it doesn't actually help. I love it. I love it. I love it. All right, 1340 into the game. Envy around the dragon. It's a one for oh here. Let's take a look at this one. And this is one of those situations where uh, Team Liquid are starting to do the right things. They have a knockback on the Niski. They're going to chase him out of this, uh, you know, kind of invasion that didn't work out for Envy. And then they get the summoner, but then they, they start playing things a little weird. Matt doesn't actually go and headbutt Niski because I don't think he wants to proc the uh, the minefield that, that the Talia just put down. So yep. he gets out. Piglet's on the wrong side here. And instead of jumping into the pit to join up with the rest of his team, he jumps directly straight line out. It's still in a bit of a, you know, not great position. Has to flash. And right. then gets very the overconfident. The play I have ever seen. Maybe not right. ever. It's close, man. It's close. That's for a pink ward. That would, there was literally no reason for you to even be contesting that control ward. Absolutely zero. And you give up a death for it. And then concede control of the dragon there. Overall, though, that fight in general, to me, as you said, started correctly for Team Liquid, and I think they identified that it was a winnable fight, which is why they pushed for it. And then again, the execution isn't there. Had they come away with two kills there, again, the game might swing entirely in their favor. Yeah, who, who knows how it works? Maybe you just grab the Ocean Dragon and it helps stabilize your laning phase. There's a lot of ways that, that what they were doing was the right idea, but they just always seem to fail the execution at, at a lot of these points. And it, this is another game where a couple things went wrong for them, and then the snowball's in full effect because we talk about the power of tanks and you have the giant Cho'Gath along with Jarvan getting pretty big as well. Right, and, and again, this is, this is that mind, we talk about the mindset all the time with Team Liquid is that they play not to lose as opposed to playing to win. And we did have that one example uh, where Piglet jumps all in on Apollo on the Jin, right? It ends up not being a fantastic play for them. We were discussing off camera though that we kind of like the intention there because once again, yeah, sure, maybe you, it turns out poorly and you just go further into a deficit, but at least you have a player on your team who's making stabs at gaining advantages back. Obviously not the most calculated aggression, but still aggression, which is something Team Liquid's lacking straight up sometimes, and it did net them an advantage in some way. They lost more summoners for the play, but they did get the teleport out, which gives you a global advantage, mm -hmm. and then you should be able to transition that into a dive, some pressure, stalling out Envy's, uh, you know, you know, team fight prowess, but they never were able to do that. Uh, and this actually just occurred to me, and we probably should have pulled this up in all honesty, but the Rift Herald usage from Team Liquid oh, was honestly... I, I had suppressed the memory. That's why we didn't call for it. It was a little abysmal. But let's talk about this real quick, because I, I do think we've seen many teams, as Jad said, we see many teams that use it when they're already going to take a turret. 
but then we also see teams not use it in situations that's, where it does make the most sense to use it. That's because Team Liquid heard Jets say that, and they're like, we're going to show you why teams do that, and here's, here's why. Because if you don't use it then, sometimes you overestimate your ability to find another opportunity. That was just really greedy out of Team Liquid because they did not have pressure in the bot in mid lane. They're saying, we're going to get this top turret anyways. Lorlo is winning up there. Right. But then they just drop it mid lane, and if you don't have a wave to walk up with or anything like that, the enemy team just uses their wave to tank the Rift Herald so it doesn't do the charge at the turret, and then they kill it for free. And then you don't get that global gold to help you close that gold gap. Now I want to jump forward at 20 minutes in and be picking up a 3 for 1 team fight around the dragon here. And this is what we're talking about, that global advantage. Lorlo has the teleport. Envy wants to force the dragon down his 5 before he builds a wave up to the top side, but they're a little late getting in with that teleport. Uh, and then they have a hard time focusing down a single member. Matt did not have his ultimate from that force that Team Liquid just had from Piglet's aggression. So he gets dropped extremely early, and now Piglet's on the wrong side of the fight. Uh, Lorlo gets taken out and focused down relatively early, and yeah. then uh, this is just a shows that it was still kind of close, and if you had a little bit more gold and played that situation a little better, maybe you're able to start getting some resets for Piglet. He can actually start winning that fight. You see the gold lead at that point was probably only around two or 3,000. If yeah, you have right an extra turret down uh, in the top lane and you had more pressure from having that Rift Herald take it earlier, maybe you can get more done in that Dragon fight. And I think that's where I kind of land on this idea that to me in this game, it was showcased that Envy's the better team, right? If we recall back to game one, Envy had priority there in the game as well. It was just the unfortunate, you know, misplays around the Baron that even gave Team Liquid the opportunity to stab back into it. And this time picking, like we said, a, a team comp that scales a little bit better, whereas last time they were clearly outscaled by Team Liquid here. Uh, while maybe, you know, hypothetically, Team Liquid still has the better late game with their two carries, at the very least, Envy on your screen can still win and compete in late game team fights. You don't need to all in on some snowball comp with a Jace and a Kennen support, though it was heavily banned. In right, the right. Uh, you don't need to go for a snowball team comp, take something a little bit more standard, and show that you're the better team over Team Liquid. Well, you know, that said, as we look towards Game 3, once again, the idea that the Thresh was banned out in Phase 1 of Game 1, and then followed out with two more support bans in Phase 2, they did show a lot of focus onto all three playmaking supports that Hakuo has. Of course, you still got to consider Tom Kench, Braum, Alistair, the likes. These are plenty of playmaking supports left that he could maybe jump to and still get work done. In the meantime, Lyra picking up player of the game. Again, the early ganks on the Choga, this time not throwing away the Baron. But uh, ultimately, this team a lot of times lives or dies by him. Yep, and Lyra had a great early game, was able to kind of get on to the map. Uh, it was initially Hakaho got the first couple kills going, but then Cho'Gath uh, it is a little difficult to execute on in, in the first couple of ganks. And then once you start hitting six, you start getting those stacks, and you start finding kills on champions, you get completely out of control, and just he became a massive wall for Team Liquid to have to try and get through. Well, Envy managed to tie up the series, so let's see if they can close it out versus Team Liquid in Game 3. Meet us back here after the break. What an aim, what a prediction there of where the end of the death sentence would him. work. First blood! <laughs> no! Wait What's a minute, that? he's got a flash. He's going down. Looks to get the call heal oh, back down it. just above top, and he can get another call, and he gets actually a lot of heal out of this one on Lyra. How is this one going to play out? Orlo goes in, rain over in Apollo. Instantly shredded down. Okay, nice. Coming, coming. Alistar, Alistar. Alistar, no ulti. Alistar, 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 Alistar. Watch your Nekton, watch your Nekton. Renekton, 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 slowly, slowly, slowly. Lyra gets hit out, Matt very low, and that could be a chomp down for Lyra. If he gets in range, that's the flash chomp. Piglet over the wall, he's got Seraph in his eyes. If he can connect enough shots, but he can't get in range to get the explosive shot down, and he starts to get taken down himself. 